everyone, welcome back. I am Fifi McLeod and I'm Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. I'm just going to give everyone a second to come in and I'm going to load our video and our comments. Here we go. And I'm going to get my um, desk set up. Here we go. And I can explain what we're doing. There we go. Sorry I'm running late, guys. I went up this morning with my husband for breakfast. And we're home. And I was pretty much set up. Okay. So I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. And I can move this all over so that we're kind of caught up. So last time when I was live, we did um, the hidden pockets. So I'll show you guys those again quick while everyone comes in. Um, they're right here. So we made the, the page pockets here. So these were our little page pockets that we did out of uh, book pages. So this was from last week. And this one, this is Journey. And this one here. And I showed you, you can stitch them. So I usually do stitch them. These ones I haven't done yet because my sewing machine's buried on my, <laughs> on my countertop right now. I'm just reorganizing some stuff. So I will be stitching um, around them. And what I like to do on an element like this is kind of flip it up like that and go underneath. So I'm stitching it all along here and then here so that I'm not um, stitching over my, my moth. And I'll do the same here. I'll stitch along here and along the bottom for this one. And then that's how it'll look with this stitched mark like that. Well, that came out of here, I think. There we go. And then um, these are the two pockets. So this is the one that we did live. So it's just a little um, journaling card that we attached um, by cutting off the top and then it slips back into the pocket like this. And I went ahead um, this weekend and I made another one. Here we go. And here's a smaller one that I did. So you can do them any size, and then you can go ahead and you can um, embellish them further, too. So we'll do that once we get these into the journal, and I can kind of decide more of what's going on on my page. So a lot of time I like to mass make these kind of things. So you could do them in any theme that you have your journals in, or um, if you have a certain style that you like. Um, that's how I like to do it. So this is going along with my steampunk ephemera kit um, that I have in my Etsy shop. But... Um, I'm using three different kits for these journals that I'm working on, and I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek, because I have a kit that I haven't released yet, but I've been making pages for it, and I have them printed here in front of me. So, just a little sneak peek. Hi Janice, hi Linda, thanks for joining me. Um, so, this one's already in my shop. This one here is the, um, the pages from Grungy Mixed Media Backgrounds Kit 2, that's these ones here. Um, I'm going to move that way that so you guys can see. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few here from that, from that, um, second kit, but I want to use different elements and, um, the backgrounds, like, that is so awesome. It looks like worn, old, tattered wallpapers, and that's the start of that one here. So that's the second kit to that. Um, these, this is the ephemera pieces here that go to, um, my steampunk kit. So this is just the ephemera pages here that we're going to be cutting out and doing different things. All here, I've got vintage ladies in that kit. I have vintage gentlemen and animals. Like steampunk animals. Oh, those are upside down. Sorry, guys. So, this one here. The gentleman here. I have some really neat looking steampunk tags. Here we go. Just to quickly show you. I'm just going to quickly browse through them. And they go with that kit. So, I'm going to be using these um, in two different journals, because um, I have a weathered sort of journal, which is going to be more um, these ones here that I'm going to use, and then the steampunk kit is going to be broken up between um, my patina journal and my steampunk journal. So I kind of have three journals going on at once, and I'm doing those covers in my grill, and all the ephemera we're going to do here. And then this one here is like a little trifold with the uh, with the trains. And then I have the hats here, like that. Okay. And then these are the backgrounds for this one. So this is kind of like um, really industrial, rusted, patina sort of 
backgrounds. I think I, yeah, I skipped one here. Here we go. There we go. And then here we go. So this is the start of a new kit. This is going to be called Grungy Mixed Media Backgrounds Kit 3. So this hasn't been released yet. This is kind of like a sneak peek. Hi, Sue. Thanks for joining. So this is kind of a sneak peek, guys, of my new patina kit that's going to be coming. So I'm make sure I'm completely in focus. And today we're making page toppers. So I'm going to quickly just show you a few of these sheets. So they are awesome. I love these. And they are their, a real grungy set. This is a uh, rust here. And then I have some here, which are kind of like um, different sort of elements. That has like a old um, crackled book cover in the center, with like, um, a, like almost like the binding to a book. And then it has the pages on the side. And this one here has um, all kinds of uh, different elements and some mark making. And if you can see, that has um, some grunge, but it's also a um, book page on the one side. And I love this one too. Whoops, it's backwards. That was not. Okay. It's the Damasco on one side. And then it has, um, yeah, there we go. And again, I've got like, a bunch of copies of things. There's one here that I did. It's like a notebook sort of thing. And um, I've done multiple copies so that we can make different elements. So that's kind of what I'm doing today, guys. And I love this one too, this damask. I think we're going to use this paper today, this one here. And um, so I'm just going to pull a couple of pages. That one's another patina that I did, kind of like a rusty patina. But I've done multiples, so we can use them for different elements and things. Let's see if you guys can see that. There's a few copies here. Um, oh, and then this one here. Some of them have four. So I've done that here, too, with this one, and I like that. Because we're going to be doing page toppers, and I want to kind of pull some, some different elements. So these will be in the next upcoming kit that I have going. And this one here has that damask pattern. We'll pull in here, too. And there's multiples. And then the next one is this one here. And this is one of my backgrounds I created for the steampunk kit. But the background's not available, so I want to make it available in this kit. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. And then this one here. So this is what I have so far, guys, printed. There, and I like that. So we're going to go ahead, and then these are more um, of the elements from the steampunk kit. That one and this one. We're doing like pockets and different things. Okay. So we'll put these aside. And I need my cardstock here. Yeah, I've got yeah, a couple pages of cardstock. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of a hot mess today. All right. So I can put those here. I want to grab my paper trimmer and we're going to need two pieces of cardstock and so essentially what I do and I want to show you guys too here's my here's my covers oh my daughter spilled some googly eyes on my desk um here we go you guys can probably see them in the corner there so the three different sizes one is more of a um a weathered journal and I have some full rust that I've done on top, and I covered it in Seth After fabric. And this one here is a patina. So this we have so far, but they all have that rusted element, so they all kind of go together. Um, yeah, this one's on the front, this one's on the back, and then this one is also on the back. So this is the steampunk journal here. There's the back, and there's the front. And we're not done. I, I'm still like probably 15 more layers to go. And I'll have those done. And then I've just put my, this is what I like to do, guys. I like to separate my journal um, kit pages. So I have them kind of ready to go. And then I cut them down to size. So then I have an idea of what size my elements sort of need to be. So I just eyeball. So that's helpful to kind of have an idea of, of what size you need to have for your pages. So I'm thinking for a page topper, I don't need to have it the whole size of my book. I'm thinking probably something about this. So for this, this is probably around 
uh, if I slide that, that's one, two, three, so four inches. So it's not going to cover the whole entire thing, but it's going to cover the top. So I'm going to cut these at four inches for this book here. And it'll be different varying depending on your books and what size you're doing, right? So even this little one, like my, I'm going to have to cut the pages all down for them to go into there. So I just wanted to give you an idea of where I'm going with this. So I'm going to cut this at four inches and I'm just going to put this in my paper trimmer. And I just have a regular piece of cardstock. I think this is 65 pound, so it's nothing um, too heavy. This one here underneath is actually a piece of, of uh, light, light cardstock. That's more like um, a scrapbooking paper, um, like a scrapbooking piece of cardstock, where this is just my like, regular um, cardstock that I use for mixed media. Um, and if we have this, that should probably be a good size. So just, I don't have to really worry too much. Just eyeball it. That's approximately my half. And then I'm just going to, I want a clean cut on this. Here we go. Okay. And we'll do two today. And then this one's a little bit wider. We could do this. So this one's at four inches. Um... And I think this one is at four, four and a half. And that's fine. So this one will be a bit wider. So essentially one are two pieces of cardstock, just like that. And this is just going to give us a base. Here we go. I'm not too worried. I got a little bit afraid of a frayed edge here. That's fine. You're not going to see that. All right. So we have our pieces. So this is our front and this is our back. And this is our front and that's our back. And I'll put this one aside. And I have my tear ruler here. Oh, I've missed crafting with you all too. I'm so happy to be back. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, I had some health issues. Um, but it wasn't anything major. I was worried that it was something major, but it's not. I had uh, no B12 in my system, guys. And um, I went in for um, um, blood work and all kinds of stuff. And I've had problems with my ankle, too, since my injury. Um, and I'm slowly healing. So at least um, I'm starting to feel a lot better, guys. And um, my B12 was low, so I'm just on supplements. So now that I've got the supplements into my system, I'm feeling so much better and I'm not, not so lethargic all the time. And um, I've really, um, things have drastically improved in the last um, little while. So I'm fin finally back to it. So I'm here. <laughs> and I missed you all too. I, I love teaching and, and crafting with you guys. It's amazing. And yeah, it's, it, it was scary, you know, not knowing what was wrong, thinking maybe it might be something autoimmune or because um, it just, you know, all of a sudden out of nowhere feeling lethargic all the time, not having energy. And, um, you know, I was just really worried that there was something, something worse, I guess, than what it was. Right. So, but yeah, I'm happy and I'm back and everything's good. So I'm very fortunate that it wasn't anything more serious than it was. And my ankle um, is taking a very long time to heal, so that's kind of been a real downfall. But uh, my husband's great, and he's been completely supportive and helping me hobble around. <laughs> um, it's not broken, but it's definitely probably dislocated. I've torn ligaments, and I probably have to go for physio at some point. But um, I'm just kind of pushing myself through it and doing what I can at home until it heals and it's better. Because, yeah, there's not really much they can do, right? So, yeah, that's kind of where that's at. So I just wanted to share that. So everything's good with me. I'm I'm perfect. I'm in good health, and I'm back. And um, and we've been sick quite a bit this year. I'm, um, I'm actually surprised. But um, my kids are in two different schools now, so it's like twice the germs. <laughs> going around and everything so uh, that's kind of expected but everyone's good other than that 
and I'm just super happy to be back. So we're going to do this super fun ephemera series for these books, guys. And then um, after this, I have the um, Lorna Taylor collections um, from Creative Expressions. She's a great friend of mine, and I picked up her collections. So I'm going to be doing all kinds of fun ephemera stuff, too, with her, with her, um, with her new sets. So that's going to be coming, too. So I just wanted to, to share that. So now what I can do is... Um, yeah, you know, we'll mount this like this, but I want to like rip and tear and add some collage texture. So this will be all one sort of piece. And then right about, yeah, right about here. I like that edge so that I can use the distress ink around it. But right about here. That's good. Here we go. There. And I, I love that, um, that strip here on the side. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that and I'll glue that down. And you want these to be separate because we're going to take a piece of fabric to attach them. So then they go over, but we're going to collage them and really build these up different ways. So we're going to just start with our little piece of paper right here, just to give it something to start with, just like that. Okay, and it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. Here we go. And I kind of want to do the same thing as we're going on the back, so we can kind of keep it going. But again, it doesn't have to be the same. I just want to pull that element right in here, and that's like perfect. And it's not going to matter what it looks like at the top because it's going to have um, a piece of fabric. And I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, this here is a piece of duck cloth. And um, I used um, Distress Spray Stain and Tea Dye. And then I speckled it with um, Seth Apter's coffee, his Ising Spray. And then I used um, the Bronze Shimmer, no, Antique Bronze, sorry, from Tim Holtz, his uh, Distress Spray Stain, to get that bronzy color so that's what this here is you can use anything guys you can use paints you could you could coffee dye this um that's just another fun thing that i like to do with tim holtz distress inks and seth apter's eyes ink is um dye fabrics and uh muslins and cheesecloth and this is an amazing duck cloth that i got for christmas from um one of my men from tammy she'd sent me some for christmas So I cut a strip of it so far, and then I dyed it. Here we go. Oh, was it the same? Okay, good. Yeah, I'm using the same size. So I just wanted to pull that element in here so it kind of um, blends together. And now this is kind of the fun part where we don't really have to have uh, any rhyme or reason. And I can just start collaging. And um, what we can do, too, is take our distress inks and make things pop. Here we go. So we can kind of do this as we go. So the first thing I'd want to do is take my um, my surface. And you guys know me, I love the grunge. So I like to grunge everything up. You don't have to use Vintage Photo. You could use something darker if you wanted to. Um, you could use um, Ground Espresso or the new Scorched Timber or um, Walnut Stain, any of the colors that you want to. I'm just going to dirty that up with vintage photo here we go and i'm just going to do the top part here so this side here okay and then that side here just like that and this side here and really dirty that up there we go so i'm good to go right to here and then that little piece that I just pulled, here we go. I'm going to ink that up just like that.
Here we go. So I just want to really hit these edges so it looks torn and old. There we go. And I'm just using regular Distress Ink and Vintage Photo. Now, I found something really cool on Amazon Prime. And they're actually muslin fabric strips for waxing your legs. Weird, right? And they don't come with... Um, they don't come with um, the um, the wax. They're just the strips. So I'm going to show you guys these. They come like this. They're called epilating strips. There's a hundred strips in here, and it's for it's called Four Pro Professional Collection, and they're just muslin natural, and that's all in French. Um, they're from Hudson, Ms. Um, MI, so I think that's Michigan, New Hudson, Michigan, uh, they're, but they're made in China. So I'm sure you can find these anywhere. So I was really excited because it takes hours and hours and hours to cut your muslin fabrics into strips. And I was like, wow, these are like done for you. So I'm opening this and I just wanted to see and just show you guys because I haven't seen these yet. See, they got little bits kind of hanging on them, so you can you guys can see that I'm just kind of freeing up the edges. But they are. They're muslin fabric, and they're already cut into pre-strips. So this is wonderful. You could do so many things with these. And that's kind of the idea that I had, guys, when we were creating these, is to either use these, or you can use, like, another piece. And that's how we're going to attach these together so like this is even perfect like this so yeah we'll just kind of do that or again like this one you'll see is way thicker if you guys can see that this is duck cloth so the difference between the muslin it's very thin and this is very thick and it's more um, textured if you guys can see that so that's the difference here between the duck cloth and the muslin so we'll, we'll kind of do um, some different stuff and I'll show you how to dye it and I mean you can layer it too right and the other thing this is gonna be great for is doing snippet rolls and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that eventually we're gonna get there with this ephemera series because we're gonna start it with the paper with the pockets um, now we're doing the um, the over uh, the um, the these page toppers and then we're gonna get into doing some uh, different stuff and I want to show you guys all kinds of different elements and different um, ways to use fabrics and different things in your junk journals. So there's going to be a lot of fun stuff coming and there's a billion things that we can do with this. So I'm excited and I got a whole pack of these of a hundred of them. They, I think they were $12. So, I mean, when you buy muslin fabric, it, it's, it can be on the expensive side. It's usually around anywhere from 20 to $30 for a yard and then you have to cut it. So this is already pre-cut for you and you don't have to fuss and it has that beautiful jagged um, um, peaking shear um, sort of um, shape to it. So it's pretty awesome. And I did, I picked up, I picked up two packs because I know that I'm going to be using these like, um, like they're going out of style. So I'm really excited for that. So I just wanted to share. So keep, keep an eye out on Amazon even for some, ex um, like even some obscure things. Because you never know what you'll find. And I was quite taken when I came, came across those. Because it saves me hours of work of having to cut them. So I was quite happy to find that. Okay, so we've got this one here. So I've done that here with... Um... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they'd be good for making just about anything. And that's what I was thinking too. They'd be a great base for for the, um, the clusters that I like to do. And the... Um, the like the fabric mm -hmm. um belly bands and things for doing that on the um sewing machine so it's going to be wonderful i'll have all kinds of different ideas coming what we can do with these and i thought it was a good price for the for 12 bucks okay so we've got that and then maybe come at come at it from the other corner maybe further down yeah and i can just and the thing too you can use your tear ruler or you can tear things by hand so that's the other thing I like to do too, where it's more of a controlled 
a controlled tear and then I can kind of decide how I want it to to go. So the tear ruler is great but sometimes I like a shape and I don't necessarily like it to be um, like maybe more organic. It's probably the word I'm looking for. It's more of an organic look. Um, like that. And that can come right to the bottom to about here. So I'm just doing one of these with my fingers and just tearing it along. So this, this patina kit is going to have all kinds of elements. So I love the script writing. That's going to be one of them. One of the elements in here. Lots of grunge backgrounds. I've got some crackle going over there. Uh, maybe we'll do that too. We'll incorporate a piece of that. Because I didn't hear just that. Maybe. Yeah, I'll tear a piece from this. Just like that. To go in there. Maybe just yeah, move it along here like that. Yep, yeah, just like that. Perfect. And then I can kind of highlight that. Yep, yeah, that'll be perfect. Just like that. Or maybe even like this. Nope, the other way. Yeah, kind of like that. And then have that first here. And I can always ink that up. Okay, let's do that first. And then this is the thing too. If I want to look at quick ink, this is another great way. Because I don't want to be here inking all day. There. And it just kind of grunts up the edges. But I will just hit it for here. There. Just to really give that edge a little something. Okay. So then we're going to glue this here. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to see all in frame. I'm hoping for an update to my phone soon. Because I can't go live in letterbox format. Like in um, landscape mode. It's only letting me go in portrait mode. So I just have to be super mindful that I'm not... Um, that I'm not coming off the page and off the out of frame and focus there we go so right like that there we go so that covers the edge that's a good idea and then I can always come here and decide that I want to tear things out a little bit more like that okay And it doesn't have to be perfect. I have some gaps in here. And I might just take that down a little bit too. Just right like that. So I don't have so much of that white space here. There we go. And again, we'll ink this up. I'm just looking to dirty up the corners. Here we go. So now these are finally starting to take shape. I want to make sure that's nice and straight. There we go. And then I can just take my little distress inker and go right in there anywhere where there's flat. And this is just going to give it another element of things being lowered and raised up. There we go. 
just like that. So I like that for the front. And then our back portion is here. And I think maybe just to keep it more simple for the back. But see, as you can see, it all kind of, it's all going to flow together. Okay. Oh, my pin's hiding. There we go. And for my glue. And then... Um, from here, we can take some, so we want to really start decorating these now. And I like to do this too, where I'm taking my cheesecloth. I do, um, I buy this in, um, um, like a pack of it from Amazon. And I think I bought this probably four years ago, because you use very little. And I think it was $15 for this huge bundle. So... I find a lot of the time, too, like you make that expense once, and then things like this last a very long time. And then I keep all of like the little, um, these little um, frayed bits. And you can really, if you guys can, there we go. You can really pull it and fray it out just by stretching it in your fingers. There we go. And it'll go like a long way. And then again, I like to dye it, guys. So let's try our new. Um, here, let's just pull this down for two seconds. This is my distress stri uh, distress tray. Um, where are we? Um, vintage photo. Other twigs. Here we go. Here's a new scorched timber. Let's give that a go in distress ink. And I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second because we're going to give this a spray. Okay, so I'm just right here with the. I hope you guys can see that. I'll wait for that to catch up. Okay, there we go. So I'm just using Distress Spray Stain in Scorched Timber. So I'm just going to... Oh, that's beautiful. Yep, yeah, I'm going to give that a good spray. And then I like to activate it by squirting it with just a little bit of water. I'm just going to make sure this is water, not vinegar. Yeah, we're got water here. I have two. I have one for water and one for vinegar. And I'm not too worried about my fingers. There we go. That's awesome. All right, there we go. I'm going to leave that flat. And of course, I'm covered. That's okay. Grab a paper towel. And I'm going to pick that up because I don't want to get that on anything else. That's super dark. <laughs> That's okay. That's great. It'll look great on there. I'm going to make everything pop on that page. So then I'm just going to take my paper towel and put this down. Give it a good blot. There we go. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my heat tool and I'm going to give it a little um, zap because I want this to heat set, so I don't have to worry about it coming off all over me. And my, um, and my art, or my, my book, right? So I just give a little zap with the heat tool, and it heat sets it, and then, I, and then as long as you don't get it wet, it's not coming off. And then we'll get a little bit lighter too, mm -hmm. once it, uh, once it heat sets. So this is my favorite way of dyeing fabrics. Just adding some Distress Ink or Oxide Spray on your mat and then giving it a go. You can do it with your, your ink pads as well. And you just put your ink down and away you go. So, again, I don't want to scorch this. And we're perfectly good to go. I'm just going to grab my um, Fabri-Tac. Here we go. 
Sorry guys, I had to move to get that. And then we're gonna we're gonna have a look here. So this is our first one. And I can just kind of start playing with it like this. See, I love the color. See the contrast? That's good. Okay. And I can kind of, yeah, maybe twist it. This. Bunch it up. Like that. Then I just kind of play with it until it looks right. And what I want to do is then grab a focal point. So, um, here we go. And this is where I want my, um, my elements. So I can come into here and kind of decide. I have the owls. I have the steampunk. I think I like that one. Um, let me see here. Be one of the guys. Yeah, one of these ones. And we'll give that a fussy cut. Yeah, I think I like this one right here. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to come in and quickly... Fussy cut him out. So again, this is a great way to use your elements and things out of your out of your um, your kits. You could use Tim Holtz. You could use anything, vintage photos, whatever you like to use. You could use your die cuts too, like your Tim Holtz people, or um, if you have ephemera packs from Stamperi uh, Stamperia, or anything like that. You could use. Um, Anything really. Stamped images. Then you can do this in whatever theme that you like. Here we go. So we have something that looks like that. And actually. Um, I'm going to ink him up for sure. And I'm just, I have him on thin paper. I haven't put him on like any kind of cardstock or anything. You absolutely can if you want to, but I'm not going to um, for this. It'll be fine. I just want to give that some distressing just to make it look old because it's got that weird white sort of background. I want to get rid of that. Here we go. There we go. That's better. And then I can position that better now. Um, just based on how I think. Yeah, see that might look better like that. And then have him towards the bottom, but have that maybe hanging over a little bit at the bottom, because it can hang over. It doesn't have to be um, perfectly symmetrical at the top there like that, or I could no, on top for sure, yeah, just like that, and maybe even a smaller piece. Let's try giving that a cut across here. Here we go, and just make it. There we go. Just like that. There we go. And I just fuss with it a little bit just mm -hmm. until it looks right. So I want to have all these elements showing. And I think that's about right. Right about there. So now I can take my fabric tack and this is my favorite thing or even three in one um, um, any of the beacon glues for fabric 
They're all wonderful. And um, they're permanent. For the most part, nothing moves after. I'm just nearing the end of my bottle. And I just do like a little pouncing motion kind of back and forth where I want that to go. And it doesn't have to go on too thick. When I get towards the end of my bottle, I notice it's stubborn to come out. And there we go. And it just has to be like that. Like this. And then I want to put it here. I just kind of spot treat where I want to where I want it to really stick. Okay. Like that. And then I'm going to fabric tack him right along here. Here we go. And then he'll have a permanent stick over the fabric. There we go. There. So we have him here. And it just gives something. I like it to hang over like this. It just gives it character. That's great. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm even thinking to do um, maybe some stamping. Let's see here. Um, this is one of my new sets. This is from a company called um, Globeland Stamps. And I really like theirs. They're massive. And um, they do come clear and unmarked. with their um, Just with the logo on it like this. And they are made in China. But I don't mind this company. Because they are not a direct copy of anyone else. And I have most of all of these sets from Tim Holtz from um, Creative Expressions. Um, I know there's more. There's a Spellbinder set, and there's a bunch of different companies that does this, and I have probably eight or nine stamp sets that are like the like the postmark and the um, postcard and the passport stamps and all that, and these are not a copy of any of them. So I'm super happy to report that to you guys to let you know. So if you do want to buy one set or two off of Amazon, I can't recommend Globeland enough. I have four of their stamp sets now, and they're not similar. Like, they're similar. They work with everything really good, but they're not direct copies. So I just wanted to share that. The one of the few that I found that are not a direct copy. Okay, so I just need a stamp block. And actually, these ones came to me yesterday, so I want to use them. And they work really well together. So I use, like, um, I use them with Tim Holtz stamp sets. And all those. There's a nice little baby. I'm going to give you either one here. Okay, and I'm just going to put that here. And we can use this rough ink. These are like a passport stamp. And my, what my archival inks are hiding. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, they are. Sorry guys, I'll just take a hot second.
Sorry, guys. They're in a basket in front of me, and it's not working. <laughs> I have them. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. But I had to move everything that was in front of me away. All right. Not a good place for them. I'll be moving those. Okay. So, now I want to use, like, um, let's use Barn Door and Faded Jeans. I like that blue. Yeah, we'll do that for now. Okay, so the first one we'll do is that. And I'm using Ranger Archival Links. And this one is Barn Door. And the Mini. Here we go. And I'm going to stamp that right here. Um, yeah, like that. Okay, maybe like off center. Yeah, like this. Okay, there we go. That was a great stamp. I'll pick a different one. Uh, there's another one here. There's four different ones, so it's kind of neat. Uh, this one says Berlin. That's kind of cool. And we'll do that one in blue. Okay, really like that. It's like a passport stamp. There, just like that. Just to give it that little something. Okay. Also goes both on there for now. And then what we want to do, and I'm not gonna do the back too much. I'm gonna leave it kind of kind of plain because I can always figure out what I'm doing on that other page. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line these up. So we, we have completely um, done these. And I'm not going to worry so much about the inside yet. I'll probably cover them with coffee dyed paper once I get them together. Um, or uh, maybe even like a piece of writing writing paper. Um, or we could just kind of ink it up. And it's just essentially journaling space. There we go. Just like that. And the fun thing too with the muslin fabric, um, we can do the same thing. You can take your uh, muslin fabric and you can take your Ranger Archival Links and we can stamp it. So let's do that in red first. So this is kind of like creating your own um, stamped fabric. And I'll show you that. So here we go. Sorry, I wipe right here. Like that. And then we'll do the blue one. Yeah, I'm really impressed with them, and I have a. I have um, a set from Globeland that's actually, um, it's all uh, mushrooms. And I'm so impressed by them because they stamp. If you guys can see that, it's just beautiful. They stamp perfect and they're very detailed. They are clear stamps and I usually prefer red rubber. But for clear stamps, these ones are actually amazing. And I'm really impressed with them. And... Um, I have this set. There's a set that goes with, um, so I'll show you guys again. This was called, um, oh, the packaging is here. It was called, um, I, I'm not sure it doesn't say. I think it was just called postcard or postmark. I have one here that says London. So I'll do that for you guys. And, um, Yes, yeah, Singapore Post Office, Agent 1929 Post Office. Here's a little one with the lighthouse. Little things, um, a big postage. This one is a big admitted. 
um, and then Barcelona, um, Bridgeport, Connecticut. That's number seven um, eight nine five, and it's an airplane. The one that I just used, Berlin, Germany. Airmail, post office book number, postcard. Um, that's I believe Italian certif certificado. Uh, this one says approved. That one says Paris. Yeah, just really cool, and a huge postcard stamp. One that says destination, and then your cancel marks. So that's kind of neat. Then, let me do this. And we'll do this one here. London. Just to make sure I've got that the right way. Okay. And then we'll use, um, let's see here. We can grab a mermaid lagoon. Here we go for our London stamp. We could put that one here, like that, just like that. So that stamps really well. And then I want to kind of eyeball um, our mank, which is here. Okay, and we're gonna see how much we're gonna need. Yep, from here. Yep, to there. Okay. I want to even that out. Like that. And then I'm just going to snip this right about here. Just like that. Okay. So then again, this is just a scrap that we can use for something else. And just like that. And again, you can ink it, you can script stamp it, you can do so many things. But I really like where we're going with that. So I'm just going to keep doing this and in sections. So let's do another red. There we go. And we're going to fill the whole thing. Do this one over here, like that. Then we do another one here, like this. Okay, more faint. So again, if you double stamp it, you're going to get it more faint. That's another fun way to to use it. The Berlin received. There we go. And right there in between. Okay, another London. So it's just a fun way to collage and to kind of make your own fabric. Oh, I got London upside down. We don't want to do that. Okay, and we're gonna. Yeah, let's do London here. There we go. And then right here. Perfect. And one of the red ones in the center. There we go. And again, I've used um, Tim Holtz Distress Ranger Archival Ink in the minis in Faded Jeans Mermaid Lagoon and Barn Door. So it's just a fun way to kind of create your own your own fabric. And it'll work on any muslin yet. And I didn't treat it or do anything. It's just like that. And then I want something to kind of fill in. Oh, let's see here. And I have a stamp that's here. Let's see. I'm going to put these ones back now. There we go. One. I'm not worried about cleaning them. There we 
There we go. And I have one here that's like a pavilion. And it's a postmark. And I can kind of put that up there. And I'll do this one in um, in black ink. Uh, do I have it? Yep, I do. Perfect. So I'm going to ink that up in black. Here we go. So it's that little papillion stamp, and I just inked it up in black. And we're going to go ahead, and we're going to put that... So I guys want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Right, we're going to put that right... About here, just like that, and then I can pull it down and do it faintly over here. There we go. There, it's just like that. It's given us like a nice little uh, collage where we didn't really have to do much. We just had to layer up some of our postage stamps. So that's kind of cool. And then it's going to look like that on this side, and then like that on that side. Okay, now we're going to take our two pieces, and I'm going to move my stamps and stuff so you guys can better see what I'm doing. There we go. There we go, our piece of fabric, this one, and we want our other piece, which is here. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these. I think we're almost out of time. Yeah, I got 1203. So we'll just do the one. Sometimes things take a little bit longer, because I wanted to show you guys that too with the fabric. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just line these up like this, and we're going to put it, and then we can decide too, because you can actually, if you want, and we wanted to see the one here, we could do it like this, and then have it longer at the back, if we wanted to do it that way. Oops, and I did it wrong, see, we want to do it like this, where it's back to back. Okay, let's see. So we're just going to line it up exactly how we want it. Make sure we're perfectly straight. So we've got our two pieces here that are perfectly straight. Okay. And that's going to be perfect. I like that, guys. So I'm going to hold that down. Okay. We're going to take our fabric tack. Oh, and I want to make sure that, yeah, we are glued right down where so these are two different pieces yeah they're back to back perfect okay and once you know you're exactly where you want to be then we're going to go ahead yeah, line them up make sure that they're perfect perfect okay sorry guys I'm at the end of my bottle there we go. Oh, another little hack. Um, once you kind of get right to the bottom of your um, your fabric tack, sometimes I like to just um, grab my, if I can see it here, should be right here, my craft pick for my Cricut. I think it's here. Yep, right here. Or even my tweezers, either or. I'm just kind of... Uh-huh. Give it a push. There we go. That should probably make a difference. There we go. Still being super stubborn. Because I've got all kinds of bloopers probably stuck. There we go. That's a little bit better than it was coming out. Sometimes you just have to give it a good poke <laughs> just to get it flowing again. Yes, I've been on the same bottle of Fabri Tac probably for the last year. It's definitely time for a new one. Okay, and I don't have to worry about soaking it. I just want enough on here that it's going to give me a really good stick. Make sure I have most of my, my 
sides of my area covered, like right in the crease here, and then my very edge, like right here. There we go. And then I'm just gonna do that motion where I'm pushing tight against the edge and then walking my fingers like that, just so I have a really nice, nice edge there. Perfect. And then I come over to this side and we're going to do the same thing. And now I can use two hands on this because I have it in position there and everything's straight. Everything's perfect. And I'm super happy with that. Yeah, one day I want to do um, boho beads so I can show you guys how to make your own um, your own dangles and your um, like junk journal jewelry um, that basically for your um, elements that can hang on your spine. Um, you can use the, the beads inside your actual um, um, book as embellishments. There's so many things that we can do. There, and I'm super happy with that. So then how this is going to look, it's like a page topper, guys. So it opens up like that, and then you have your, your journaling space on the inside. You could also put a piece of fabric here if you wanted to, or a piece of washi tape just to reinforce that. But you don't have to. It's perfect just the way it is. Um, we could add a Tim Holtz word or something. Um, let me see here. These are new to me as well. Oh, and this is the stamp set by Spellbinders. I'll show you guys. Um, it's by Kath Holden. So it's um, called Flea Market Finds. So it's got signatures, and we're going to be making passports and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So I just wanted to share that. So I have some, I'm going to have some printables that go along with this. It'll be a freebie for everyone. And then um, we'll build them up together. So we'll be making little passports, and then we use our stamps to... Um, put the signatures and then our, our stamping on it. And I'll have a tutorial of how to do that. And um, so that's kind of like a, an upcoming thing that we're going to do. Probably for this journal. So look for that soon. But I want, just wanted to share. So that's the one by Kath Holden by Spellbinders that I have. So that's the... What's in that one? The signatures and shipped... Charged, cancelled, paid, original, duplicate, triplicate, entered, received, answered, filed, packed. Yeah. So just a lot of fun. And they all work together. That's the fun thing, too. Um, let's see here. Here's one that says journal. If I can get that to come up. This is um show you guys. A Tim Holtz uh, chit chat book. I just picked this up on Amazon. This one here says journal. There we go. And we can put that right here. Um, yeah, right here. Straighten that up a bit. There we go. Journal. I like that. Or maybe right here. Sometimes it just takes me a minute to, that's better, journal. I like that. And there's the back. And we can always add something in later if we want to, depending on what we do there. And I want to show you um, how that's going to look. So when we have our book, here we go. And I'll make some more and then I'll show you them next week. So when we have our page, it opens like this. This is going to sit like this on top of our page just like that and then the back 
You could make them skinnier. You could make them longer. Um, you don't even have to do them like that if you don't want to. You could make them smaller so they go like this. And you can clip them in. And I would do that anyways. I'd add a little paper clip to the top. So just like that. There. So it's super fun. And um, I hope you guys try it and you guys make some. They're a lot of fun. And I'll put the other one together. And then um, once I have a few of these done, I'm going to post pictures of these into group for inspiration. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was so much fun. And I'll be back, um, not next week because of Easter, but the following week. Yeah, the following week. Because um, Tuesday, my kids will be back. So that'll be like Monday for us. So I just wanted to share that. I'll be back the following week for sure with our, um, with our next tutorial. So thank you guys so much. Have a great Easter, everyone and enjoy. I hope you guys um, have so much fun with your families and your loved ones, and I'll see you all back um, the following week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.